<laughs> I think we are live. Oh my god. Oh my are we god. really? I think we are. Hello, really? guys and girls. Welcome to uh, the very first live session for Can I just say Badminton something? Experience. It's, it's a bit fast to say welcome. I think we will need to give the audience a few minutes so I can't tune in. No, we can welcome more people later. Okay. We have to welcome yeah. the ones that are here on time. That's right. That's right. So, welcome from Mr. Badminton from myself and from my ugly co-host he's so ugly he needed to wear a cap so that's why uh, but and that definitely definitely helps on my look because it is the Bamton experience uh, fan gift a beautiful cap it is it indeed. does help a lot indeed indeed i've never done this before can we see how how many is uh, tuning in yeah up in the corner so right now 40, oh my 45 god. but we need a oh lot my god more. 45 uh, oh my god it's that's crazy insane. it's crazy um before we start answering a lot of you guys questions uh we will just give people a bit of time to tune in right so there's always some who are five ten minutes late so first of all can you just tell people like how was your holiday in uh, the states you just uh, came back home three days ago yeah something like that it was good it was good i really enjoyed it it was my first time being uh, in the united states mm -hmm. um so it was awesome it was a very very different um experience compared to japan so mm -hmm. i flew from japan where we played the world championships and also the japan open then i flew to to the united states from there and i would say that it is it was so different i mean mm -hmm. the people the culture um everything was just mm -hmm. so different so it, it was definitely a fun experience for me to be over there and um yeah i enjoyed it i'll definitely go back in the future mm -hmm. i i would say new york was a crazy city it was a mm -hmm. uh, it was phenomenal to be there. Um, have you been there? Uh, I played US Open once, but it was in New Jersey, so it's not like real New York. I never really went into Manhattan or, or anything. No. So I was like, I think it was for like one and a, one and a half hours from uh, from Manhattan. I stayed. Uh, I made the final, but yeah, I want to tell the people that. So that's why I didn't really have time to go to the city center. Was that the year where you did the? I mean, uh, the, tweener the, the tweener under your legs. Yeah, in the final against Lee Chung Wing. That's 2015, his comeback after his uh, his uh, doping ban. That's an iconic moment for you. It is. It I is. would say it, it would be it would be on your highlight reel for sure. For sure. If you have to pick like three of your biggest highlights, um, not in terms of results, but in terms mm -hmm. of uh, crazy rallies and stuff. Um, I actually had this discussion with uh, the friend who was with me on on the, on the trip here. Mm -hmm. We said uh, that one against uh, Li Chengwei was one of them. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like you have another one against Li Chengwei uh, from All England. Yeah, from 2012, where yeah. I dived like three times in a row. Three times in a row, ended yeah. up um, under the net. Yeah, that must be number two. And uh, which one could be number three? I mean, you're known for like diving, like all the time. I think one of my personal favorites is the one from India Open when I played Momota. The only time I ever beat him, where on 2019 in, mm. uh, what is it nine? I think it's 19 all actually in the first game. I hit a smash and lose my racket, and I'm already on the way forward. So the racket bounces off the floor. I catch it with my left hand, and I hit the next shot left-handed so a lift with my left hand i remember that one yeah i win the rally as well and win 21 19 and beat mimosa for yeah the first time and so far the only time so i like that one personally but it never really blew up in terms of uh views online no not really it wasn't like a televised no no, no it wasn't, it wasn't. <clears throat> there's one here saying uh in the chat saying versus lee chug yui uh like that, that must be the one from uh, from thailand mm. where that crazy finish of the match. Can you just explain? Yeah, how it went down? yeah. I think that was an probably nineteen all in the uh, in the final game where I do a uh, like it's a quarterfinal of Thailand Open. Uh, Lee Chuk Yu has to win to make the Super Series finals. Mm -hmm. If I win, uh, Ginting will will make it. So there was a lot of focus because obviously a lot of Indonesian fans were rooting for me. I had a big lead. He caught up at 19 all, and then we play a rally where I kill a shot at the net, and it's pretty clear on the, uh, on the slow motion. I think even before the slow motion that I also touched the net on the kill, um, but yeah, the ref didn't uh, call it, uh, or the umpire didn't call it, and I got the point. And I think that also created a lot of uh, controversy. I would say that that's very unsportsmanlike behavior from your side, Hans Christian. Well, you 
a real sportsman would have, uh, I mean, given the point to him. And of 19 all, well, I asked Lee Chuck Yu afterwards, actually, and he said he would have done exactly the same. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> of course, I would have scored a lot of uh, sportsman-like points if I had given the point at that time. But I think even if I had set to the umpire touch the net, it's not even certain who accepted. No, no, no. Yeah. The, 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 the fun thing about that whole incident, um, and I, I don't know if you just uh, mentioned it, was mm-hmm. that it, it, it kind of like, it was the exact same situation that happened when Lee Choi uh, played against Anthony Ginsing in the mm-hmm. final in Hong Kong. Yeah. Where Anthony Ginsing was called for being mm-hmm. over the net on, on a net kill. Yeah. And he wasn't, you could see that clearly on the on the replay. And that was um, match point, right? And that was, that was match point, yeah. So Lee Choi Yui won the tournament uh, on the, on that point. So it, it was kind of fun that it, I mean, mm-hmm. it, I mean, what comes around goes around. Yeah, so, yeah kind so of like that, yeah. He got it back. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what's going on here in, in the chat? What's up, chat? What's up, chat? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of you guys already uh, typing in your questions and just uh, keep them humming. We will, uh, should we just get started with the questions? Yeah, sure. Can, can, can I just talk a, a bit more about my experience in, in the US? Oh, yeah, sure. Because sure, sure. I visited one badminton club over there. Oh, yeah, I saw um, that on your Instagram. Yeah, and that was, that was great fun. Um, so, uh, it was, I, I did this Instagram story where I uh, asked if there was someone in New York who was down to play some badminton because I wanted to kind of like stay active a little bit. Um, so, and I got like so many response. Um, many of them was like not really serious people from mm-hmm. all over the world saying, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, fly me in and I'm, I'm down to play. Yeah. But there was a lot of um, players from this club, um, Long Island Badminton Club, mm-hmm. um, which said that, they would love for me to to come out there and, and practice a little bit and play with them. Uh, so um, I did uh, one day and I, I went out there with the purpose of just practicing a little bit, uh, stay active, as mentioned. Um, but then they really caught me by surprise when I entered the hall. It was like, I guess it was like all the people who's who's involved in the club. I mean, from, from uh, coaches to young players to older older people just playing for fun mm-hmm. um and they were standing there clapping when, when i entered the the arena and uh, no, not the arena the, the club mm-hmm. um, and i didn't expect that at all and then i ended up instead of like practicing i ended up doing like one hour exhibition where yeah. i played with the coach and i played uh, a bunch with uh, with many of the kids and mm-hmm. that was great fun yeah. um so i didn't really know what to expect in america because i know badminton is, is not uh popular sport in America mm. at all I actually met some people I was in the park uh, I was in the park once uh, doing a workout um, just like a big football field and mm. I did, did a workout there um, and I was having my badminton record with me just doing some some shadow okay. moving, moving around yeah. um, and there was this guy who had an awesome <laughs> energy down in the park he was just hyping everyone up okay uh, just <laughs> let's go champ let's go champ good work good work <laughs> he was he was so awesome, and, and and then I walked by him, and he was like, "Hey, yo, champ, what's that? <laughs> is that tennis? <laughs> no, it's not tennis. It's, it's badminton." And then I explained to him, "The racket is a bit smaller, the yeah. court is smaller. It's it's not the same at all." But uh, yeah, badminton is not very popular, and and also I guess I guess hundred percent of the the players in the club mm. was uh, either born in asia or yeah so of asian, or, or, or had so asian parents yeah. and so non non uh, american uh, citizens uh, not, that, that's not the same but how, how do you say it? yeah well they're from asian descent all of them yeah so yeah i think that's also my picture of both uh, america but also canada uh, that it's in the asian communities that it's that it's quite popular actually and i think that's also why, like the U.S. Open has so many years, but in L.A. in Orange County, where there is a big Asian community as well. So I think they try to like kind of gather it where the interest is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you also saw that Victor is actually coming to yeah. uh, North America on a tour, and uh, yeah, you've just been there. Um, I, I really like think that could also be a sign, especially with Victor, that maybe there is a market that's perhaps growing or it'll, maybe he can spark that kind of uh, interest that could be that could be huge it would be awesome if we could get uh, america into badminton as well mm-hmm. um i don't know i don't know what it takes 100 percent. i mean their their way of i talked a bit with some of the players mm-hmm. um, their way of training is way different than ours where we have 
so many clubs around uh, the country. Um, they have clubs, but they don't have like uh, team practices. Mm. Like for us, we, we pay a one-time fee and then we like have uh, practices uh, offered to us like the whole year around. Mm. They don't really have that. You'll have to pay your coach every single time yeah. you have to, yeah. to practice. And I think it's quite expensive as well yeah. to do that. Um, so it's a, um, it's a little bit, it's much different and it's very difficult for them to get like, yeah, good training all the time. Mm. One thing that I would say that's, that's very important to learn is to, to play with the, to play with other kids and being able to, to, to feed, mm. you know, where we hold all the, the, the shuttle cocks yeah. up on our arm and then they like feed the, the, the other player if, if they want to do some technique and just some different exercises and they don't know how to do that in many countries yeah. and the kids are not being taught that mm. and that makes it quite difficult just to like me and rasmus gaming for instance all the time when we were young young kids we just went to the club and just practiced with each other no yeah. coach no needed coach. Yeah. and most of the time it was without a coach actually mm. we just did that all the time mm. and i think that's very important if, if uh, i mean for younger kids to develop faster mm. that you're able to like coach each other almost yeah but they don't learn that over there so they need a coach every single time and that's quite expensive so mm. yeah that was that was a yeah. bit about the america the America about America. America trip. What's up, chat? <laughs> <laughs> let's just get right into the uh, the questions and let's just start off with the first one we got from uh, Rita, who was uh, already there before we started. Mm. He's asking about uh, which stadiums has been our favorite and our least favorite to play in, and that's only considering the gameplay, so not the crowd, because we always answer like his daughters and I am. I think that's the favorite for. A lot of players because the atmosphere there is crazy but like in terms of how nice it is to play in the actual arena and which arena is maybe not so nice to play in and i have one very clear favorite uh, hall go ahead and uh, that's the uh, the arena in birmingham for all england i mm. just love that arena uh, it's not too windy but there is a little bit of wind uh, which I, I don't mind as long as it's not too much i still think you can play some yeah, some really awesome badminton where it doesn't affect the game too much. It's a little bit slow as well, or quite slow perhaps, um, which is what I prefer. It's very easy to see the shuttle, uh, and yeah, it's just a big, beautiful arena. Uh, so I think for me that is, uh, if you look at nothing else but the actual playing conditions, mm -hmm. that's my my favorite arena. Would you prefer like a huge arena, kind of like uh, the one in Birmingham, or mm -hmm. some of the arenas in like Singapore? Uh, Malaysia is quite big as well. Mm. Uh, the ones in Japan is also huge. Mm. Would you prefer that um, over like halls like Stora Sinayan, Denmark Open, French Open, that's more like compact and you get like a different feel from the crowd? For sure, I prefer the big ones. Uh, I think it's also because I produce my best results in the uh, big halls uh, in general. Um, it's not like I've never done well in the, the more compact halls, but I just... I find it easier to play my kind of badminton in the bigger uh, and a little bit slower holes. Um, so I, th I think it's because of that. Uh, I would still prefer to play in Estorla just because of the atmosphere. Mm. It's crazy there. But if there were no crowd at all, I would prefer one of the uh, one of the bigger arenas. I would say the disadvantage in terms of Singapore and Malaysia that I mentioned is that there is a bit too much wind in terms of what I prefer. Mm. And that's why the All England one is... is at the top of my list because the wind is not crazy. I think I have the opposite view uh, here. I like the the smaller arenas because it it gets a bit more intense. Mm -hmm. The crowd is closer to you. Uh, I would say my three favorites would be uh, Indonesia, Stora Sinayan, uh, French Open, mm -hmm. and uh, and Denmark Open because the arenas is not the same size at all. I mean, I think the hall in, in Denmark where we usually play Denmark Open, it's a new place this year yeah but where we usually play it uh, could be in the all england arena like five times ten times or something like yeah, that yeah, yeah. so it really makes uh, it it also makes the the badminton way different mm. way way different for sure i also think that in a in a huge arena like the one in all england or the the ones in japan there's a huge difference in the badminton being played uh depending whether you are on one of the courts on the side mm. or whether you are on the main court, like in the, in the middle of the arena. Yeah. 
because when you are when you are playing um, in some of the on some of the outer courts, you have this feeling like the arena is not as big as yeah, it actually sure. is because the the fans is, is very close uh, on, on one of the sides. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when you enter one of the center courts, it's just it just feels like yeah. huge, and it is huge, um, mm. and it definitely. The, I feel like the game becomes much more flat when mm. it's on the outer courts. Yeah. Um, for some reason. Yeah. Do you have like one arena where you always have, like, kind of a bad feeling to start off with when you start training there, and like where you don't feel like you're seeing the shuttle well or you're just not hitting it so well. So do you have like one arena where you think it's a little bit tougher with the playing conditions? No, not 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 really. I feel like I've always been, uh, maybe actually I've been struggling quite a lot in Malaysia. Yeah. I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's tricky for some reason. I don't know if it's because of the drift, um, but I just feel like it's difficult to, to, to have a really good timing in your strokes. Mm. Often you, you, you just don't uh, hit it uh, that well. Mm. I would say the first few times I played All England was difficult for me. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the the lights over there were mm. so bright um, and they kind of like blinded me. And, and that, that was also at the time I was struggling with migraine a lot. So yeah. I didn't really enjoy that that sharp light uh, mm. right into my eyes. Makes sense. Um, I say for me, it would actually be the arena we played then my government. Mm-hmm. I, I've never really found a way to like get the right timing, and it's all I've always been struggling with my lifts in there. So I'm I'm very excited that we are changing to a new arena this time. I've played them. I've opened in this new arena once, like 15 years ago, um, where I lost to Hafiz Hashim. From I think Malaysia. I was in the arena. Yeah, um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, probably. Should we move on to yeah. another question? Yeah, you choose mm-hmm. one. <clears throat> we have Oliver sitting over here. Maybe ha- have you uh, found found a good one for us? Yeah, there's someone asking about if you have any specific rituals you you do before uh, each match. Listen to a specific music or some other specific yeah. stuff you have to do before you step on court. Should we just uh, say it again? Yeah, any spe- any specific rituals we have before matches. Anything we have to do in terms of listening to certain music or yeah. anything else. I My- think you are more into that than I am. My thing is definitely uh, to to put on some uh, rap music. Um, rap. I really enjoy only that. rap. Mm, yeah, yeah, almost only that. Nah. I yeah, close to. <laughs> yeah. I listen to a lot of Drake before. Uh, okay. Before my matches, um, it just really fires me up. Um, I, I like the the lyrics and the vibes that you get from some of the songs. That like, it needs to be a, a, like high pace um, before before a match. Or um, yeah, that's that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. I don't have like a a certain ritual before I enter court. Only I have one when I go on court. Uh, like just before we start playing, I need to do uh, like a certain way of doing like my footwork like shadow footwork yeah. on court uh, so four corners i all need to get through i will always finish off by hitting a smash in my round the head and then moving forward uh, i have that that, yeah. that one as well okay. that that's the last thing i do before we start yeah. the match uh is that footwork routine around the court yeah that's where they started uh to do that hey yeah hey in uh, hey. indonesia in indonesia yeah. every time i pretended to 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 hit a, a stroke yeah hey <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a classic nowadays. They do it a lot with, Ch- with Cho uh, from Chinese Taipei as well. We have one here. Invite Cho Chin Chin to the podcast. Yeah, sure. We would love to have him on. Not sure about his English if it's good enough, but yeah. I, 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 I think we could do it. Yeah, I think we could do it. I think yeah. I've been talking to him a little bit here yeah. and there. Yeah. I, I think he would be able to to do it. Yeah. Should we just quickly say about Panoi? Because we promised that we would get him on and we still will. Uh, but he just got married and he has a lot of uh, responsibilities with his wedding the next couple of weeks. So we have to wait a little bit before he's on. But we do have an agreement with him. So he will be on soon, hopefully. I think we have we we have some great guests lined up, actually. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned for that, guys. It, it will be awesome in, in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming weeks. Yeah. Um, there's so many actually. It's difficult to talk and read at the same time. Yeah. So I think we need to get Oliver and. Uh... Uh, we can take a quick one here from a good friend Scott Evans, who's asking, "What's your opinion about blue aftershock?" What's that? Do you, you don't know what it is? No. So Scott, we need to introduce Anna to blue aftershock. 
it's not good for your health, but it uh, it has a fun effect on uh, on your mood. What is it? It's a shot. It's a shot, yeah, that you drink mm. uh, when you are going out. It's good that I do not know what is. <laughs> yeah. That I means, have, I that, means that, that I, it means that I do not drink a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <clears throat> Only wine here and there, but yeah. What do you think about next year's calendar? Seems a bit different from before. Oh, you're not much of a fan, right? I think it's also like it's it's kind of hard to say exactly how it will like pan out because it's like we haven't planned our schedule yet. For me, it will be a little bit different, being my last year and everything. So. I can maybe be a bit more picky uh, with what I choose, um, but I guess like for you, it will be probably a very very busy year. Yeah, I mean, so is it like a month ago they released the tournament mm-hmm. calendar for 2023 and 2024, yeah. and um, it is absolutely packed with tournaments mm-hmm. from Super 300s, uh, 500, 750, and thousands. There, there are so many tournaments. Mm. Uh, I personally think that there's way too many. Mm. Um, I think it's it it's like um, devaluating mm. the tournaments a bit. Yeah. Can you say that? Yeah, you can. That makes <laughs> a lot of sense. It's really changed there. Yeah. Um, it's just like I think we mentioned in it in the earlier podcast as mm-hmm. well that there's the world championships in Copenhagen and like one or two weeks after that, I think it's two weeks after that, yeah. Yeah. there's a super thousand tournament mm-hmm. yeah. in China. Yeah. Um so you actually need to travel the very next week. So yeah. if you play the world championship final to Sunday, you'll yeah. have to travel like Thursday or Friday yeah. to China. It's just it's crazy. I mean, I, I was trying to plan um the up the upcoming year. Uh yeah few weeks ago and it's just insane there's so many tournaments and i think it's a shame i think you should do less tournaments and mm-hmm. then maybe make the prize money larger in those tournaments yeah. and and then do a better better job of hyping specific tournaments to be something special yeah because it's not something so quality over quantity definitely it's yeah. not something special when we just play every single week mm-hmm. um, it's yeah. Um, yeah it, it, I'm I'm not happy with the tournament calendar. I think it's uh, yeah, it's way way too many tournaments in my in my opinion. Yeah. Don't you agree? I agree completely. But uh, yeah, I think for me it will probably be a little bit easier because uh, there won't be any stress for me about like staying in top anything at the end of the year. I don't need to really think too much about that. I just need to stay in so I can choose any tournaments I want to play next year. And I love this uh, yeah. this question. It's a question that you get a lot as a badminton player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually got it. Uh, re- I I got it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Actually, okay. It says, um, do, "Do you both uh, have enough financial support to be able just to focus on playing badminton?" Mm-hmm. Even though I'm number three in the world, I still get that question. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's it's says, just, <laughs> it says a lot about like where badminton is. Yeah. I would say that um, I would say yes. Um, I'm not uh, in school. I'm not uh, working part time. Any of that stuff. I simply do not have time, uh, and I don't want to either. And I don't have to. Um, it's not so, necessary with your income. No, it's not. So I'm. Uh, no, I don't have to. No. Well, it's it's the same for me. I'm not earning as much as you for sure, and I'm not earning as much as I did when I was ranked top ten. And so I'm definitely not uh, getting rich or anything uh, as it is right now. But yeah, I've earned an uh, okay amount earlier in my career, um, but not enough for me to just like when I retire next year, I will have to start working uh, like straight away. I could go for a short period of time with with no job, but I would have to get into a job uh, pretty soon after. But I think, like, don't you think, like, the top 300 in tennis would be able to live off of off playing tennis only? I actually think, like, when you get outside of top 100, it's right, quite steep how fast you go down in, in earnings. Okay. Um, but I think for sure there are more players that are able yeah. to live 100% off it. In and tennis I think the, and golf. And, yeah, I, mean, I think the big difference is also, like, in tennis... Uh, you earn a lot on your own. Like in badminton, a lot of the people that live completely off badminton is only because they are funded by the federation. Mm. So they, they get support in that way. It's not from sponsorships uh, where like for us, we basically get nothing from the federation. Of course, like they they pay for the, the coaches uh, wage and uh, shuttles and renting the hall and stuff like that. But it's not like we don't get 
to see any money on our bank account from the federation it doesn't work like that in, in denmark um, but that's different from many of the other uh, nations yeah so like in malaysia or indonesia even in england so also in some european countries they will get a salary uh, depending on like how high the rank is uh, we just get some expenses paid for but it's definitely not a lot i've already spent all of my uh, money that i get to pay for expenses uh, from the federation i, I spent that on one asia trip i guess it's probably around the same for you mm. but i think i mean there is just huge difference um from like the the top five in the world in men's mm. singles to the top uh, i mean just outside of that yeah I mean, yeah I can see it on my own uh, salary that I get from, from sponsorships because I used to be top 10. Now I'm yeah like 25 or something. And there is just a, a huge difference in terms of uh, how attractive I am. To I would also, sponsor. I would also, be and age is also a, uh, a factor in that. I would also say that it's, um, I would assume that the men's singles players is paid uh, much better in general mm. than the other categories. Yeah. I think that's a uh, completely agree. I think that's a hundred percent right. Yeah. So it's just there's not as many players in the world who's able to live off of badminton, mm -hmm. um, but there is obviously quite many, and also because of the fact that they they are like funded by the their federation from a very very young age. Yeah. And one of our viewers actually has a good point that it, like in in at least in India, some of the players become very rich. So it also depends a little bit on the market you're mm. from. So, cause we're from Denmark with five and a half million people. It's not as easy to get like local big sponsorships here as it is if you come from India or yeah, I guess Malaysia, Indonesia, where there are a lot more interest and a bigger, bigger market uh, yeah, to sell yourself to. Has BWF ever contacted you guys to do a co collaboration or something? Yeah, that's a good question. Because oh. they haven't. Yeah. They haven't, no. Which I think is a big mistake. I think it's good. I think we could deliver <laughs> some very good content. Maybe we wouldn't uh, make an agreement with them, but I think they should definitely uh, yeah, like look into it. I feel like we are the biggest critics of BWF there, maybe is, that, maybe there is on the internet. So I, I guess why. that's why. Um, there's no doubt if they did contact us and if we were to do like a collaboration, we would have to be able to say anything still. That yeah. is kind of uh, why we're doing this. Right they now. won't do to us like they do to Jill Clark. No, 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 no. We, we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to sugarcoat uh, anything. No. Uh, so maybe it's a, a conflict of interest. There. We believe in free speech here in Denmark. We do. Yeah, we do. I have a good question. Oliver but has a question over there. There's one asking, how much pressure from the Danish citizens or media can affect your performance on court? And he writes an example in case like A's loss at Aarhus Thomas Cup 2021. So is there a huge pressure from the, the Danish citizens and the Danish media when you have to perform? Don't you think that they were able to hear that? I think they probably, were, but they should be. Quickly, like the question was about how much pressure do we feel from uh, like from the media here in Denmark, is is it so much that it actually uh, affects us on court, right? Because like an example he picked was like the Thomas Cup loss for you in uh, in Denmark, where there was a lot of attention from media and crowd. So do you feel that like do you, do you take that kind of pressure with you on court? No, not really. I, I guess there there is uh, there is pressure. Of course, there's uh, many people watching. Uh, I think badminton is quite popular here in Denmark, mm -hmm. so. There's uh, quite a lot of people watching. Uh, you can also see it on the social media pages uh, that there's a lot of uh, people in the comment sections and mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, but I, to be honest, I don't really pay attention to it that much. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of expectations to myself, and I think that's that's I mean more important than what other people would expect from me. So, I mean, Thomas Cobb was. Uh, in 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 Aarhus, my hometown here in Denmark uh, was awesome, uh, and I definitely wanted to perform for the crowd. And I think it made me play better. It didn't make me play worse. I was just fired up. So uh, I mean, but I mean, the the media is 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 rough at times, uh, and the people in comment sections can be tough. And also, if you check your DM after a match, it's Usually not a good idea, especially if you if you lost, because people online is uh, is crazy sometimes. Mm. But no, it, for me it doesn't really affect me that much. Mm. 
yeah, I think for me the pressure is is considerably less uh, because I'm I've like in my entire career I've been number I've never been number one from Denmark, so like the main pressure has never been on me. Most of my career I've been number three uh, or four in the uh, like in the pecking order of Danish men's singles. So I think there's there's not a lot of focus on me unless I'm in a very specific situation where where they expect something from me. But like even in Thomas Cup matches, because I'm third men's singles, it's always kind of like uh, I would say it's like a bonus if I win more than people expected. Where for the past couple of Thomas Cups, you and Victor, because of your ranking, the media will just expect that you just win all your matches because you're higher ranked than your opponents. It's never really been kind of like that for me. So I definitely, I don't take pressure from from the media with me on court. Uh, I think the media in, in, in other countries is uh, much more harsh to, mm. to their players. Yeah. I, I have a feeling like a country like Malaysia yeah, and Indonesia, yeah. I feel yeah. like the, the media and uh, people online perhaps is, is very harsh to mm. their players yeah. when it's not going in in their favor. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but that's kind of like my feeling. Yeah. I just saw something here in the comment section uh, a few minutes ago. Just, I don't know if this is... This is not blue aftershock, by the way. This is just water. Oh, it's it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. So it's what gone. was it about? It said congratulations to Anas for ah, number two in the world. I saw week. that. I saw that. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought that I was going to drop on the ranking. Like, yeah. I think that's also just for like a short period of time because you definitely have not performed like a world number two for the past year. Uh, I'll, well, I'll take it though if it, if if it's the case. But I think it's it's been removed, so maybe it was just a mistake. Yeah, maybe, so, but it, it could be possible as well because the, the rankings are still not working like normal. There are still a lot of old results that count. It's not until we get to January when it's back to completely normal and it's just the past uh, 52 uh, weeks of results that count. So maybe it's possible that you go to world number two. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But you are for sure not world number two <clears throat> in terms of uh, performances. I'm past. not. I'm not at all. I'm not at all. What's up, chat? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Congrats, eh? <laughs> world number two <laughs> that's huge Way that's huge uh, i think this one from uh, rahul kashap is actually uh, quite interesting because we also talked about it a little bit uh, before uh, i wish we could have lots of strategic strategy analysis uh, videos badminton tactics and strategies are just not discussed unlike in football basketball um so like with an ex experts on board analyzing tactics uh, and we actually talked about like uh, perhaps doing some videos where we look at our own matches and uh, just kind of live comment on them and talk about the tactics and our thoughts and stuff like that. But I completely agree with Rahul. You don't really see that in like the TV productions either. And uh, there's a very, very little bit of it in, on Danish TV where they analyze uh, some tactics, but you don't really go deep into it like you do with a football match where you have maybe a half an hour, even an hour of, uh, of uh, like a pre-game show mm. or uh, even after the game where they analyze. I think that's definitely a thing. We, it's uh, quite complicated, I feel like. Mm. it's uh, Football is perhaps a bit easier to like show to, to the audience mm. because all of them has been playing it. Mm. And not all of them, but yeah. at so least... So you think the general knowledge is a little bit higher? I, I think so. Um, but don't you think, think the ones that actually watch, watch badminton are the quite dedicated people who know about badminton? I don't, I don't know for sure. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. I see one comment there saying Jill Clark is only talking about drift every match. And I think drift is one thing that's difficult to understand Yeah. if you have not experienced it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean... It's yeah. not. It's not many many people who actually have experience. No, you, you you would yeah. need to be a very very good professional player. Um, I also always see that on the like Danish TV channel who has the rights that they get a lot of comments from people that are saying like stop talking about the drift. Like mm. the, it's it just shows that they don't really understand like how much it affects the game because that's why the commentators who are former players obviously they understand the. Yeah, like the the meaning it has, mm. it, it does affect the game in so many ways. So yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of like in tennis where they play on different. Um, how do you say it? Different 
they play on grass they play on yeah, uh, surfaces different surfaces, surfaces. Um, that's kind of like the same that also really impacts the game mm. and drift impacts bands on yeah. so so much as well also speed of shuttlecocks mm. what about this idea Hans christian um when when you retire from bands and you start a another youtube channel mm. with a match uh and a, an analysis an analysis a typical word where you just go through matches go through uh, tactics uh, educate the audience mm. a bit isn't that a good idea yeah well if i knew anything about tactics it would be a good idea but i'm, <laughs> I'm like i'm just playing on an intuition all the time yeah, right. now i think that actually it could be a good idea but it also it, it would actually take a lot of work to set it up in a uh, in a good way but yeah not a bad idea Will you guys play? <laughs> thinking the same. Will you guys play French Open? That's a big yes. Yes, we will. I love French Open. I'm really looking forward to playing French Open. Me too. I, I think it will be the last French Open for me. Oh, yeah. it must be tough. That yeah. must be tough. A little bit. But like, every single know. tournament you play will be your last time playing that Starting exact tournament. Starting from French Open, because I think when I play Denmark Open, I I might play it again next year. So that might be the final one. Uh, play next year but yeah starting from french open i think it for sure will be the last one then my goal might be as well but i just cannot guarantee that would there be a chance where you two play men's doubles together would there be a chance of me and Anna's playing men's doubles together mm, well not an in international competition for sure uh, maybe for fun someday in the danish nationals or uh, something like that uh, i don't see it happening uh, like quite Uh, you should do it on so your final tournament. In my final tournament, I just don't think we will qualify to get in. But uh, yeah, sure, we can ask BWF for a wild card. That will be the price for uh, collaborating with them. We need a wild card for my final tournament. I feel like there is um, there's some 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 questions about whether we'll skip either the India Open or the Malaysia Open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in January. I think there's some uh, there's some work. Warwick fans in, in the comments. Yeah, well, that's the thing with the calendar. There are so many tournaments that players will have to skip some tournaments. You yeah. cannot play all of it. I think for January, right now, my plan is to play Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, I don't even remember if that's the right order. Uh, so it, it's it's going like there's Sudirman Cup in January. No, not in January. Oh, is it January? Yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, because I know in January there is Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, India. So there's a Super One Thousand, Super Five Hundred, Super Seven Hundred and Fifty. Is Indonesia the last one, or is, is no? There... I'm pretty sure it's Malaysia first, then Indonesia, and then India. Okay. Yeah, I I'm actually not sure to be honest. Um, I was thinking about the tournaments during the summer where there's mm. like five tournaments in a row or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually not 100 sure. I'm not done with um with with the tournament calendar. Um, yeah, me neither. But my original plan is to play the first two and skip uh, India. But it's yeah. Malaysia, India, Indonesia. Indonesia is the last one. Oh, okay. Then my plan is to skip Indonesia. That's how. It no. Is. Yeah. You cannot do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll fly out a, to do yeah. to do some uh, podcast. But that's a small one. It's still in the Indonesia 500. I'll be there for the Indonesia 1000 later in the year. We need to get you out there to make some content. Yeah, but it's too much. It's too long. Mm, I want to stay away. You should prioritize. You should prioritize content <laughs> much more. It's not about. It's not about it playing the tournament for you pay anymore. The bills. It doesn't pay the bills. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. If you prioritized it a bit higher. <laughs> Let me know in the chat. <laughs> um, do you think there will be a time where men's singles will face off with women's singles? Uh, no, I really don't think so. Uh, that's just too much of a difference in terms of uh, like our physical uh, capacity. I think that so, would be weird. Yeah, it wouldn't be fair on the uh, female athletes who are amazing as well. So they deserve, deserve their own uh, category for sure. Which uh, which category do you think is like the most popular category, men single or women single? And I'm asking because yeah. I feel like the women singles category is very popular at the moment. Yeah, like there, there are some different characters that's very popular. Yeah. Um, also, if you look at their social media mm-hmm. following and stuff, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think maybe across the board, the men single is still more popular, but mm-hmm. there is definitely. Like Sindo, Taishu Ying, Kalina Marin, 
Yamaguchi, Yamaguchi uh, and uh, Hachinak, yeah. Hachinak. There, there's, I mean, quite a lot, very, very popular yeah. women singles. I think for quite a few years now, uh, I've been calling uh, this era of women singles like the golden age, because as you say, there are a lot of different players from different countries as well, and big markets uh, for a lot of them. Uh, so, yeah, I think no doubt that it's growing a lot, the women singles. Uh, I still would say that men's singles is uh, is the one that's getting more focus, which is also, in general, in the media coverage, it's always uh, male sports that gets more focus than female sports. So I think it's also like that in, uh, in badminton still. Uh, but yeah, I completely agree. It's it's growing for the women, for sure. But I would say there's no doubt in my mind that singles categories are getting more attention compared to the doubles categories. And since I'm a singles geek, I don't mind that too much either. Mm, should we take a, a last few questions? Yeah, and then yeah, wrap yeah, it up? yeah. There's many saying uh, why you guys never invite Victor Axel into the podcast or get Victor Axel into the podcast mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, we will, guys. We will at some point. Yeah, I'm sure he will agree to it if we uh, set it up at a convenient time. We'll also, try. Also, uh, PV Sindo. I mm -hmm. saw uh, people recommending her again in the yeah, comment section. Yeah, yeah. And guys, it's you also need to understand that it's not that easy just to get people on the podcast. Yeah. It it it's it's kind of difficult sometimes to um, how do you say it with with different schedules and um, different time zones, different time zones, and um, and even I mean, when we are at the same tournament, it's very difficult with the time schedule actually because we get like uh, training slots that might be in different parts of the day and like we need to be at certain places at certain times you need to catch the bus at a certain time so there's not that much free time no. and it needs to kind of uh, overlap and the person who wants to get uh, on the podcast and we still need to focus on playing as well yeah i would say many of the of the players who's been like recommended for us to get on the podcast already reached out to to many of them so uh yeah hopefully guys we will um Stay patient with us. We, we we will get some of them. Will we play the PBL, the Premier Badminton League in India? Yeah, for me, it's a hard no. I'm going on holiday during uh, that time. Nice. Uh, my mom is paying for a family holiday, so we could not reject that. Cool. Yeah. I might. I might. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I don't know. I, it depends on whether I will be picked on the auction. Yeah. So um, I might come to to India again. I played the PBL 2018, and it was actually a very very fun experience. So mm -hmm. I would like to to come back and uh, and do it again. It was it was a good show. So yeah. um, you have to come to India. Yeah, <laughs> there's also someone asking about women players uh, on our podcast, and we actually reached out to uh, a few of them. So we are trying to get some women on uh, as well. But you are always very welcome to suggest even more players that we need to reach out to. But it's not like we don't want women on. I know it's been a while since we had Gresham on. Do you prepare a set of questions for the guest prior to filming the, the podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say we prepare quite a few. Maybe not like certain questions, but more like topics that we want to, to talk to them about. It could be also like a certain question, but we try to just have three, four, five topics, and then we kind of take it from there, see how the the conversation develops. Yeah, uh, It's not like we have 10, 15 questions that we, we have to ask them. Uh, but definitely, yeah, we, uh, or at least, uh, yeah, we, we both do quite a bit of research, uh, talking about the results and highlights and stuff like that to figure out what could be interesting. Uh, we also try to get, like, relevant uh, guests on the podcast. So yeah, sometimes it's obvious that there's something going on that we course want to talk about mm. um but the 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 favorite episodes for me is just like where we we have a few notes things that we want to touch on but mm. the conversation is just like flowing and we don't mm. think too much about mm. it yeah it's just it's just like a um, like a good conversation and it's just that's it's, what we want it's least. just it's just yeah. taking us somewhere yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to sit down and do like a regular interview yeah we just just want to just want to talk, and I feel like some of the players that we have had on the the podcast has really liked mm -hmm. uh, like the the format, mm -hmm. and maybe they expected it would be like an interview, yeah. but it, it wasn't at all. Um, I think that's especially important when we talk to the players that are not like very comfortable with their their English speaking skills. Like we, it's a big goal for us to kind of 
make them feel relaxed. And you don't get that if you just like hammer away like certain questions and they need to answer this and that. It, it has to be more like a just a friendly conversation. Exactly. Uh, there, there's, there's someone here who's been asking many, many times. Okay, now it's gone. Maybe I'll ever delete it. Yeah. <laughs> about I played against Kodai yeah. from Japan. Yeah, and uh, what, what do you have to say about him? I so just, what I just saw it like him? five times. So now I was like, okay, let, let, let me respond. Uh, great, great guy, great player. Uh, hardworking, hardworking. Uh, not so tall and getting, mm -hmm. getting a lot of uh, shuttles back. And um, so he's, he's a tough one to beat. Mm. I think um, it was like 21-19 in the third game. So it was it was a tough game. But uh, yeah, one, one to look out for, definitely. Mm. Why are all Danish players bad tempered? I actually see that quite <laughs> often on, uh, like online that they feel like Danes in general are bad tempers. I don't know if there's any uh, like explanation we are maybe a bit more expressive like in in terms of uh if you compare it to some of the uh, the asians but i feel like there are asian players as well that has a lot of uh, uh, anger in them yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but i think like showing emotions uh is uh is just more common in general in the uh, in denmark and i think if you come from a culture where it's maybe more common to kind of hide it mm -hmm. it can seem a uh, very kind of like in your face mm -hmm. um so maybe I think it's, it's, like, it's a part of the, the culture to be more straightforward. Maybe it's like frowned upon in, in mm -hmm. some of the, the the Asian cultures that you don't behave. Is that a new expression you just yeah, yeah. I, I feel just, like I you were just, waiting for a chance to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just in America for a yeah. few weeks, so uh, I learned something over there. Yeah. No, but but in Denmark, it's quite normal to like shout and be... Uh, extremely frustrated and, 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 and really show it. Mm. Um, some people actually like to see it. They like to see the passion uh, from the players. Yeah, because I think it also goes the other way. Right? We also show more joy if it goes well, if we win and stuff. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We do. Um, so maybe that's one of the reasons why they you, they don't do it as much in Japan, for mm. instance, yeah. or other, yeah. other countries. There's definitely a big uh, contrast if you look at how uh, Yamaguchi is celebrating compared to how uh, Anna Sarsbusen is uh, yeah. <laughs> celebrating their wins. Yeah. Um, I think we are about to. I mean, it's actually a shame because we are we are on 250 uh, viewers, and that's like high score for this uh, yeah. live stream. So it, it's a shame. But I think we're about to be done. I have to leave for practice in like 15 minutes. Badminton comes comes first, right? It, it, it does, but uh, should we just say thank you so much to to everyone tuning in, asking uh, all these uh, great questions? Yeah, and we will uh, put this episode online at some point, right? So people who are not here live can also watch it, or if you watch it live, you can rewatch it. Uh, not sure exactly when that will be, but we will uh, put it, post if it. If we online. do it, we'll do it fast. Yeah, but let's 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 discuss that after this uh, live stream, whether we'll do it or not. If we don't do it, there will be much uh, more from us from the Bampton experience in the upcoming weeks. We have some great guests lined up. Maybe there's also a boys only episode. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think the next uh, next month will be very exciting. We have a legend on uh, in, in one of the next episodes. Um, so uh, yeah, stay stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, to this uh, live Q and A. From, from us, the Bamton Experience. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Yeah. And um, this was Hans Christian's idea, and I think it was it was fun. So we'll definitely do that again. We will. In no doubt. Future. Cheers, guys. Bye, and bye, guys. Why, how did you say in the states? Was bye, it? bye, chat. Chat. All right, all right. Bye, bye, chat. chat. Bye, but. Whoa.